everybody at Westside. We are continuing in the Gospel of Mark today, and we're looking at Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 34. This is a wonderful reminder of the importance of an active faith that seeks out Jesus in our pain and our suffering. So I want to start by asking each one of us, what are we waiting for? Any human being at some point has to spend some time waiting for something, whether it's that job situation to work out or a broken relationship to get healed. Maybe we're waiting for some physical uh, healing like the folks in today's passage. All of us in Second Corinthians chapter 5 are waiting to be clothed with our eternal garment of righteousness, to be healed from the brokenness in us and in our relationships and in our world. And so today we're looking at people who are waiting. And so please read with me as we start today uh, at verse 21. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus, realized that the power had gone out from him. He turned around to the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You can see the people crowding around you, his disciples answered, and yet you asked who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Jesus rewarded this woman's active, courageous faith. She told Jesus the whole truth. She fell at his feet and Jesus commends her and not only heals her physically, but he's healing her socially, emotionally, uh, he's healing her spiritually. Because this woman had been bleeding, she'd been unclean according to the customs of that day. And so that meant that she couldn't be married and she probably couldn't even have friends because anyone who touched her would be considered unclean and would have to ceremonially uh, wash. The scripture tells us she had already given all her money to try to get healed. Nothing had worked. So she had suffered greatly for 12 years. And so I think for a lot of us who have some kind of ache in our hearts today, for some, some touch of Jesus, this can give us encouragement. Uh, his love for us is so deep um, and sometimes we just don't understand. But we cling to his promises as we read in places like Psalm 103:12, where we're told that as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love towards those who fear him. So we have to sometimes just trust in those promises and live by faith, not by sight, as 2 Corinthians 5, 7 tells us. But this is a great passage in Mark because we see Jesus crossing boundaries to bring healing and to bring life. Um, earlier in the chapter, Jesus had 
healed a non-Jewish person, a, a, a demoniac. And then today we see Jesus going to heal a little girl. And in those days, children had no status, absolutely no social uh, power. And yet Jesus has compassion for her. And then again, to a woman. A woman especially uh, marginalized because of her bleeding. And yet, just like Jesus crosses through uh, boundaries of culture, gender, um, ethnicity, we as his followers are called to do the same and bring encouragement and truth and life to those who are hurting around us. And I have to think that Jesus didn't want this poor woman to settle for just physical healing. The scripture tells us as soon as the woman touched his clothes, she was healed. She knew it. And she could have just slunk off, snuck away in the crowd, and, and been physically healed. But Jesus wanted more for her. And so he, he calls her out in the crowd. Who, who, has, who has touched my clothes? And he's doing that for her sake. Because it was common knowledge that this woman was unclean. And now as she has to confess that she, what she has done and, and her situation, Jesus is able to proclaim over her great words of commendation. Your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. What great words for this woman so that she can now live in the community um, as someone who was clean and as somebody who was rewarded for her faith, even as someone who had suffered for 12 years. And Jesus gives her the gift of peace that I believe he wants to give you and I today, whatever situation we're waiting on in our lives or whatever situation we find ourselves in today, Jesus desires to give his followers peace that passes understanding. As we hold on to all the promises that God is working on our behalf in ways that we don't yet see. So even though we may have to wait a while, just like the woman had to wait, we can get discouraged. I'm sure there were times when she was very discouraged. Just hold on to your faith. And that's what we're all called to, to do with, a, with an act of faith. Just think how many people were touching Jesus in the crowd that day, but only one was touching Jesus with faith, with, with hope, with expectation. And she is the one who got healed. So whether we're waiting just for our own sin and our own uh, brokenness, to be made right, or whether there's some other situation in our lives, if we fall at our feet before Jesus, as this woman did, as we pour out our whole hearts to him, the whole truth, uh, we can have confidence that Jesus hears us and he's working out good in a way that we might not see yet. In fact, you know me, like I did last week, uh, I, I pointed to a song that if you'd like to, you can look it up, Danny Goki's song, Haven't Seen It Yet. And he talks about this very truth that just after the darkest night, there comes a beautiful sunrise. One day we're all going to see every tear wiped away. And uh, anyway, you can look at that if you're interested. Otherwise, let me pray for you that God will give you peace. Lord Jesus, each of us is waiting today on something. And so we ask that in your mercy and grace, you would help us to hold on, that we would live by faith, not by sight, and trust in you and your good promises, that you would encourage each sister or brother listening today, because of who you are, your great love for us never fails. So we put our lives in your hands. May your perfect will be done. We ask today in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.